I think that uh, we have time for uh, the audience to ask questions, if you'd like. Um, does anybody have any questions? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have, um, what is your most, what is the most difficult part when you're in a film, when you're directing a film? That you would, just, you would just see, say. Uh, well, the, the most difficult part of making a movie is, is the time factor. Um, money, you know, time is money. Mm -hmm. And it's very expensive to make a movie and there's a lot of pressure on a director uh, to make your day, to make your schedule. Um, the film I did with Kinski was scheduled to shoot for 20 days and we we ended up shooting 30 days, so it went 10 days over schedule. But as you'll see in the documentary, I had, along with the Italian producer, had recommended replacing him. And once we, as the production, said, we, we have to replace this actor or we're not responsible for what will happen to the film, the producer had to take the responsibility, the American producer had to. Uh, so it actually worked out better for me because I could actually intentionally shoot longer and <laughs> Kinski would be blamed for it. So I did that. So it's not too bad working with a madman, then. You, you, you have to turn these things into lemonade. <laughs> Glass is half full or half empty. So difficult actors with I used to I used to tell the story of... I, I don't want to give it away, so I won't say what I used to tell actors. <laughs> Does anybody else have any questions? Would you say that you have a, like, a favorite production you've done or like a favorite uh, piece of work? Out of your work, could you pick a favorite? Uh, I, I, I do get asked that a lot, and I, I think my answer uh, is I have favorite scenes from movies, but I don't have a favorite movie. Because uh, I never really, I, I have yet, I'm still trying, so I, ha I haven't yet made the movie that I want to make. Um, much of the th work I did was I was hired to to do a specific movie and the one thing I would do and I encourage this for all of you because we we don't always have a choice as to what job we get mm -hmm. so ev for every job I would take that was offered me I would when I would finish that job, I would write an original screenplay that I wanted to make. Mm -hmm. And I did sell some of those, but I never got any of them made. So... Do you have one that you're proudest of? The film, I think, that, ha that shows me with the best work is a film called Catacombs, which is kind of a lost film. It, it was made at the end of... Uh, we made it for a company called Empire International um, and it was taken over by the bank and I carried the last, the only print of it to, to the Cannes Film Festival and then I had to give it to the French distributor and I didn't get a copy of it like on video for, for about three years and it, I don't think it was ever released in the US, it was, it was released, uh, it was released it actually was bought by MGM, the library, the entire library was bought by MGM and they re-released it, or they released it, uh, and they put it in a, a, another franchise. Um, there was a film called The Curse, and then there was a, The Curse 2, and then there was The Curse 3, and then they bought Catacombs and they just called it Curse 4. <laughs> Uh, it's, so it's out on, you can get it on DVD or I have it on L, the, the big laser yes. disc. Laser Don't disc. look for it on YouTube. <laughs> you might be able to find it. It's called The Curse 4 and then something, 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 something. <laughs> but that, that, was a, that was, you know, I, I show clips from that to my class. There's some really great scenes in it. Um, we shot it in Italy. The thing, the thing that was nice about shooting in Italy, besides living in Italy, 
was um, they have great craftsmen. The crews are really, they do all of the big American and British movies because there's no longer an Italian industry. Or when I was shooting there, there wasn't one, it still isn't. Um, and you, you had just the best crews in the world, mm -hmm. you know, that, that just, so when we shot on, uh, the company I was working for bought the old De Laurentiis studios and, and so they were big, huge, massive studios and you could get any, anything you needed in terms of anything, production, sets, props, costumes, wow. you know, and um, so, I, you know, I've, I've, I don't know that I've ever had that many resources since, I was thinking 80, 88, even on Puppet Master I didn't have, probably had more money, but I didn't have nearly as many resources. Probably made your job a lot easier. Oh, it was a dream. You know, because your 10 days were, uh, were at the studio and 10 days were at a monastery, which is location, but, but uh, those 10 days at the studio were really great. Um, do you find it difficult to uh, direct someone else's work, or would do you prefer to direct something that you've written? Well, it's always much nicer to direct something that I've written. I'm just much more interested in it. <laughs> when I did television, it's somebody else's script, and and there's really not you don't have very much freedom as a director. You're you've got a very strict schedule, and you have. You have specific sets that you have to use, and, and you have very little time to do it. And so it's not considered a director's medium. It's considered a writer-producer's medium. Um, you get paid very well, so it's nice to work in television. Um, but you don't have... I mean, I, it, 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 in, in some ways it was so boring uh, that I would have to find something I did one episode where I was mainly interested in transitions from one scene to the next. That's how I got excited about it. <laughs> because it's so, you know, you have one scene that's a walk and a talk in the, in the police station. And it, it's, you, you know, you do it every other week. It's the same scene. Mm -hmm. they're, they're walking from here and they, they're talking. So it's just a track back. And then they, they settle at the, at the desk, and one person sits down, we're just standing, you do a single, a single. And so, what I love doing is figuring out how, you know, how to do really great shots and things, and, and you're just very limited in, in television. So I would much rather do something. And I, in fact, some of the projects uh, early on, Puppet Master being one of them, uh, the, the producer knew that I had to rewrite the script. There was already an existing script when I wrote the Puppet Master. But just for my own process, <coughs> I would have to rewrite it so I would know how to direct it. I would have to rewrite it so that I could shoot it and stage it. And, um, so I, always, I, I either wrote an original screenplay or I rewrote an existing screenplay. Did you get a lot of uh, flack from the writer who actually wrote the script? Did he try to stop you? I know how well, it, it was are. a Writer's Guild project, so there are very specific rules. And uh, the way it works is, uh, if, if it's a, DG, a WGA script, written, in this case it was written by two uh, Writer's Guild members, the first thing you do is you talk among yourselves and see if you can agree on how to split the credit. Mm -hmm. And in this case, the choice was we could split the, we could split it as two screenwriters. He could have the story and I could have the screenplay, or we could arbitrate. If it goes to arbitration, then there's a system where anonymous writers guild members read the scripts and decide what the credits should be. Mm -hmm. In this case, I suggested that he take story credit and I take screenplay credit, and he said, fine. Mm -hmm. 